Hey everyone, how's it going? So, first of all, I'd like to apologize for the lighting. Um, yeah, it's kind of dark and there's not a lot of light in this room. But anyway, I just completed Need for Speed The Run. And it is one of the most horrible racing games I've ever played. Alright, literally. And this may come as a surprise to many because the trailer for this game actually... My phone fell. The trailer for this game actually looked promising. It did. When it opened up with the... This trailer was seen through the eyes by Michael Bay. And it was like, whoa, you know? Like, it's Michael Bay? I have to get it, you know? I mean, it looked pretty good. It looked action-packed. It looked like a Hollywood blockbuster movie, you know? Now that the game's out, and I've had a chance to play it, um... It's just, it's very disappointing, unfortunately, and it really should have, it really should have been better, to be honest, because of all the past Need for Speed games, I mean, you have to, you have to realize that Need for Speed The Run is made by a completely different developer than Hot Pursuit and Shift to Unleashed. These are, Need for Speed The Run is made by the guys who originally started the series, I think, or the guys who did, like, Undercover and, you know, all those... Basically, the guys who did the games where the series actually fell downhill from there, you know? After Undercover, everyone's like, Need for Speed, you know, that series sucks. And then, with games like Shift and uh, Hot Pursuit, you know, coming out, everyone's like, wow, you know, this series actually does show some promise. Need for Speed and Hot Pursuit, last year's release, earned my favorite racing game of the whole year last year. It was outstanding. And when they announced the run, I was like, wow, you know, this looks pretty awesome. It looks like an action-packed movie. And that's essentially what this game is trying to be. However, it falls flat on its face, unfortunately. And they tried to make it cool with some quick time events. It didn't really turn out. Now, the whole story is pretty simple. There's not much to grasp on. Um, there's basically... Your character, Jack, um, needs to pay off the mob. And the game starts out with him about to get killed. He, ex he escapes. And then uh, he meets up with his friend, uh, Sam, who tells, who tells him that there's a race going on. And, uh, she, uh, basically, you know, signs him up, and they go ahead and, you know, he starts racing. That's it. That's, that's all that happens. He escapes from the mob, he enters the race to get 25 million in order to pay off his debt to the mob and live a happy life. But there's not much to grasp on. That's, that's like it. I mean, the ending is really unsatisfying as well. You're not going to get a really good conclusion to the ending, unfortunately. Um, but, yeah, Jack... The character, he, he's an asshole. He looks like an asshole. He talks like an asshole. He sounds like an asshole. You know, it. he's an asshole. <laughs> he really is. I mean, he, he beats cops. He, uh... Freaking races with no motivate, well, depending on how you race, but, you know, it's need for speed. You race with, like, no... No, uh... You know, motivation to really care about any anyone else. I mean... It's just me, myself, and I, basically, with him. And, uh, yeah, so the character isn't really that interesting. I, I would have preferred a character and a storyline that wasn't as, let's say, dark, but really, um, was really good to grasp on. Let's, let's have, like, one, one of your rivals in the game actually would have been a good character. One of the rivals, uh, Caesar De Leon or something like that, I think his name is. One of the rivals is trying to make money, uh, for his wife and a kid, you know, and he's trying to, you know, make money so uh, he can live a happy life. That would have been a better character. That would have been a much better character to start on. And there are kids outside. That would have been a that would have been a much better character to have the game start off on. Someone who, you know, you can grasp is someone who really is trying to make this work for him and his family. That would have been so much better. But instead, we get this prick who just likes cars and doesn't have any remorse for anyone else. I just unlocked all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, the whole point is that you're racing across the country, the United, the United States. You start from San Francisco, you're racing to New York, all right? There's like 200-something racers, and you have to get to number one spot. So, you know, what are you going to do? Um, the graphics, the graphics of the game... I mean, this game, this game tried to show off a little bit with its 
Frostbite 2, you know, engine. The game uses Frostbite 2 engine, but to be honest, I don't think the game looked as good as Hot Pursuit last year. I mean, the environments don't look as detailed as it did in Hot Pursuit, you know? When you're driving, like, from towards the end of the game, you're driving in this, uh, in this area where there's, like, leaves and everything, like, you know, it's like fall. All the leaves are on the ground. What would have been really cool is if you're driving and all of them are, like, spreading apart, that would have been some cool physics effects, but... Instead, they're glued to the ground, and they show, you know, it, it, they don't even act like there's anything whizzing by them. That would have been cool to see all the leaves just shh, flying in the air as you, you know, you're driving past them. That would have been sick, but they didn't really do that. I mean, there's a couple of cool um, races in here. A couple of cool races. Uh, towards the middle, you'll be, uh, this is actually in a demo. If you played a demo, you're racing um, on a mountain with the ice, and there's, like, a huge avalanche coming in. That That's a really cool scene. Um, and then the last race is actually really cool, and it, there's a lot of a variety in the last race, although it's frustrating as hell, but it's still some pretty cool. Uh, conclude the run. You can actually, hold on. Uh, oh, <laughs> one thing. The total... The total playthrough time of the campaign for Need for Speed The Run clocks in at exactly 2 hours, 11, 11 minutes, and 56 seconds. 2 hours, 11 minutes, and 56 seconds is how long it took me to beat the campaign. You can beat this game in one sitting. This is... I mean, it, it kind of frustrates me because for 60 bucks... Are you guys fucking insane? For 60 bucks, you get... A bare, bare, I, you know, in fact, if I didn't screw up that last time, I bet I could have made, I bet I could have knocked my down, if I pl actually played the game again, I bet I could have knocked 20 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 minutes off of that time, making it an hour and 45 minutes around there. I mean, it's so frustrating. I, I feel sorry for anyone who bought this, who paid full price for this game. 60 bucks, and you're gonna get a two hour campaign, barely, and the game just expects multiplayer to carry it on, you know? So, that's how long it's going to take you to play the game. Um, but yeah, we're back on the graphics. The graphics just don't look as detailed. The character models suck. The environments don't look as detailed as the actual, as Hot Pursuit did last year. Um, the cars have pretty good detail on them, and they do damage, you know? They do damage pretty well, but it isn't anything like Shift 2. It isn't anything like, uh... You know what? I think when I said previously that this is the worst racing game I think I played all year, no. Shift 2 Unleashed was worse than this, but this isn't really far off. Um, but anyway, yeah, the damage, there is damage. Um, it's, it, it's not, it's kind of good, but in a sense, kind of, some of the damage just looks awful. Like the glass when it's shattered, it's all pixely, kind of. When you're viewing it up close, it looks horrible, you know? It doesn't look pretty, it doesn't look pretty good at all, you know? But... Yeah, I mean, the graphics you're not really gonna really get into. I mean, when you're racing, the actual gameplay, the actual gameplay graphics look better than the cutscenes, which is embarrassing, you know? So, there's that. I mean, like I said, the Frostbite 2 engine, I mean, it's pretty noticeable that some of the elements of Frostbite 2 are here. Um, you can see the, uh, you can see the glare on the screen when, the, when light's shining at it, you know? When you're racing towards the sun, it kind of blinds your view. It's really uh, bright and stuff. So it kind of has that battlefieldish, you know, graphics, but not nearly as detailed. Um, the gameplay. I mean, it's a racing game. There's not really much to do else but racing. And unfortunately, I think this is where the game could have really been something different. They claim, you get to go out of your car, we're gonna let you go out of your car and do all this fun action stuff, but it's a quick time event. So you're sitting here, you're constantly tapping A, A, A for in the run, and then Y, 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 Y for in the jump. And, and it's just like you're not controlling him, you're not being part of the experience. All you're doing is tapping a button and tapping it as it comes up on screen. I mean, it's just, I think it would have been much cooler. What they really could have done in terms of gameplay that really would have made probably the game great is they could have actually added some shooting elements here. Because the game, the game does actually, you know, when you're playing it, it's like you're watching a Hollywood blockbuster film. It, it, you can tell right off. You can tell that they, what they wanted for this game, they wanted this game to be the uncharted of racing games. Sorry about the lights. I just went blank. 
you can tell that they wanted this game to be the uncharted of the racing game genre. They wanted huge action stuff happening, epic explosions. I mean, the sense of speed in this game is amazing. You, When you're going 130 miles an hour, uh, and, and even higher than that, I mean, you're... It's hard to control your vehicle because all this stuff's happening. You're just whizzing by and you're, you know, you're like shaking to get around this past turn. I mean, you can really get into it, but you can tell right off the bat that they wanted this to be, they wanted this scene to have excellent cinematography. They wanted epic action stuff like Uncharted and they wanted, I mean, you can even tell when you're turning, the camera moves closer in on your vehicle so it gives a more intense feel as you're turning around the corner. You can tell with the camera work, the explosions, the types of, the, the speed and everything, where you're racing, all the set pieces, you can tell they wanted it to be the uncharted of the racing game genre. That's all. But the control, the controls, the cars handle like shit. They really, there really isn't a difference to each, to how each car handles. I didn't feel much of a difference to each, to uh, how each car handled. One didn't feel lighter, one didn't, I mean, you're kind of going faster with some vehicles, but like I said, the sense of speed is so fast that you're just whizzing by everything, so it doesn't really matter. But, I mean, none of the vehicles really feel different. You're not going to really say, oh, well, my Pagani is faster than, you know, it feels so much different from me racing this Aston Martin V12, you know. It, it, you really aren't going to notice much of a difference, unfortunately. It kind of sucks. The cars all handle like crap. They do, you know. Um, so, yeah. But what I thought would have been really cool for the gameplay is... At the beginning of the game, it would be cool to see Jack escape from the car, you know, uh, escape from the car, well, this is kind of a spoiler if you haven't played it, but I'm just, I'm not going to spoil much at all, I'm just going to tell what I thought should have been in there, but as Jack's escaping from getting killed, it would have been really cool, instead of, instead of him just running straight to a car and getting the hell out, it would have been really cool if he grabbed, like, a, a handgun out of his glove compartment, and then, all of a sudden, like, a third-person shooter uh, action moment would have triggered, you know, and you had to fight off the mob, or you had to use some stealth, It'd have been really cool if it was like a stealth mission. The beginning was a stealth mission. You had to sneak through the mob and get to the car and just get out. And what would have been really even cooler is when you're facing against rivals, you can like actually uh, take your gun and you can actually aim and shoot your uh, rival's car, causing him to spin out of control, you know? That would have been awesome. It would have, it would have, I mean, you would have deviated away from the Need for Speed, you know, the Need for Speed, uh, series and also the racing genre but it would have given a unique experience and really if this game had third, third person shooting like I mentioned it probably would have been excellent you know there should be moments where you know you can control Jack and you can be able to shoot people or take an art take an RPG and like you know freaking um blow up a helicopter or something like that I mean do something crazy but with, with shooting and stuff like that, but they just don't have that. It's primarily a racing game, but, you know, I think Need for Speed, I mean, it's it's kind of funny, because you had this whole streak of great Need for Speed games, and you pretty much brought the game, brought the series back to, you know, a good standing, and with this game, you kind of broke that. The streak kind of broke, and it kind of, and so the guy kind of tripped, you know, the series kind of tripped a little bit, you know, seeing it's a person. But, yeah, I mean, there's not much to grasp on here. I haven't tried the multiplayer yet, this is only the campaign, but like I said, I beat it in 2 hours, 11 minutes, and 56 seconds. The game keeps track. The game treats, the game keeps track of your time and everything. Alright, it keeps track of everything. So, really, in Need for Speed The Run, you're supposed to beat it as fast as possible. And in fact, think of it as this way, this game is not really original in, the, in terms. Think, I don't know if this has ever occurred to anyone, but what does this game remind you of? Back in the 90s, what, is this old, what does this game remind you of? It was an old game, old racing game, it was a lot of fun. They have it in arcade, um, you know, uh, arcade machines there at like restaurants and stuff. Where? What, what does this game remind you of? It's Cruising USA. It literally is Cruising USA. Remember Cruise in USA? Same concept too. Race around, race across the whole country. It's the same concept. Only, only there's, I'm dropping batteries. Only there's fewer, there's fewer races and the game's slightly longer. That's what this game wanted to be. This game wanted to say, hey, Cruise in USA, remember that game? Let's bring it back. Need for Speed the Run. I mean, the game's, I think, 
Cruising USA was made by Midway, if I'm correct. It was one of my favorite racing games back in the 90s because it was just so fun to jump in. It's in the arcades and everything. I mean, this game is primary. It's just like Cruising USA, and I just I was realizing that as a player, I was like. This is like freaking, you know, Cruising USA that I played, only it sucks. And the cars handle, you know, horrible. So, I mean, I hope I brought the... I hope I gave you guys a little bit of insight of what I thought about the campaign. I mean, it's... I really don't think you should buy it. This game isn't worth 60 bucks at all. I mean, I had to see... We'll see about multiplayer. I may do a video on a multiplayer, depending, but... As far as the campaign, if you're gonna buy this game for its campaign, don't buy it, alright? Don't even buy it for multiplayer. <laughs> I, I haven't even played the multiplayer, so right now I'm just being biased, but I'll go play the multiplayer, and, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll put it, maybe I'll put a video or something like that, but as far as right now, the, the final score for Need for Speed to Run, and it's pretty stupid, I mean, they have, they have, like, um, checkpoints in the game, but they have resets. The game tried to be like Forza, where they have resets. You, you get up to five resets, and if you f use all five of those resets, you start from the beginning of the stage. What really pissed me off was the last race was a seven and a half mile race or a seven mile race or something like that was the last race. And uh, you're racing against that one guy, right? And I'm just about, I'm about to pass the finish line, right? I'm like first place and all of a sudden, somehow, some way, I wreck, I wreck out and I have no resets available so I had to restart from the beginning. I mean, I literally screamed at my TV, like literally. The the ending's so unsatisfying. It's thanks for playing. That's what the ending's like. It, it it's not a bit. What really been what would have really been cool is like I said another third person shooter segment. Maybe you get the cash right, but all of a sudden the mob drives in and they're about they're shooting and you have to like shoot you know your way out of the area. And it would have been cool if you got like a nice getaway uh, ch a getaway car chase. Or something like that um, that would have been awesome you know or if you know someone would have stole the cash that would have been sick but they just decided to uh, you know do nothing with the game so anyway this is the shittier version of cruising USA for the N64 I don't recommend buying it uh, my final score is gonna be a I'm gonna give it a six. I'm gonna give it a six. It's kind of disappointing because Hot Pursuit was amazing, but I'm gonna give this game a six. I mean, there's a little bit of frame rate problems here and there. It's more, more in the cutscenes, but it's it's nothing like too drastic. And there's some screen tearing going on too. So there's a little, little bit of technical issues, but yeah, that was my review. Uh, I don't recommend buying this game. If you're gonna buy a racing game this year, I recommend buying Driver San Francisco or Forza Four. Driver San Francisco was a great game. At least it had like a six to eight hour campaign that was really interesting, you know, and was fun to play. And it's open world. This game's linear. This game's short. This game doesn't. Ha this game has horrible handling as well. And uh, if you want a more simulation, of course, Forza Four. I think Forza Four is like the best racing game out this year, though. That's what I, that's what I personally think. Out of all the racing games I played, Forza Four is the best. So, yeah, I'm gonna end it here because I'm gonna talk too much. Um, at least I got that out of the way, so I'm going to continue with uh, some good games here, like Skyrim. I'll play some Skyrim, or maybe some Halo Combat Evolved. I started Halo Combat Evolved, but it's, it's okay. I mean, I'm just not a big Halo fan, so that's probably why, but yeah. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.